This is the city, Concord, New Hampshire. This is the castle, the state house to you. Here are a few of the brave and true knights who regularly journey from afar to do battle with Killer Rabbit State Government. <laughs> New Hampshire Liberty Alliance political uh, director, have, Representative Dan uh, Itza. Two, only one of them actually got in. The primary and the research form. director, and Dennis Goddard. Election. And now the time has come to vote committee recommendation. This is referred to as exec session or executive session. If they want some clarification, that you may be the expert on a topic. So, good Sir Knight, what is our quest today? Well, we have a whole bunch of new pawns, new recruits, new people who are maybe not familiar with the legislative process, how bills become laws, how to pass them, how to kill them. Today, we explained the process in sort of an academic fashion, how a bill becomes a law, how the committee process works. Now we're going to see the real battle. We're going to see these three levels happen. We're going to see just the parliamentary procedure and how those things happen, which is super important to know if you want to be able to have an effect. But most importantly, we're going to go observe the people and the personalities behind the podiums, as it were. We're going to learn how to become advocates for liberty today. Today's specific target is HB 48. Close to. In front of the House Election Law Committee. to define what a political organization has to achieve in order to obtain party status and have its nominees uh, printed on the general election ballot. And we crafted a bill <coughs> um, that essentially the basic structure is it would define, it would split the definition of party for uh, political purposes into uh, major parties and minor parties. And the bill seeks to define the lower thresholds for a minor party to achieve minor party status. Major parties would still be uh, defined according to the current law, 4%. We, I, I brought them in into legislative services. Legislative services had uh, a real problem with taking it um, in that by manipulating <coughs> the definition of party for political purposes and the fact that the term party is used so frequently throughout the election laws and election statutes that it didn't feel that it had enough time to comprehensively address the issue. So what I'm going to recommend is, um, it, and hopefully the committee will back me up on this, is just as a matter of ministerial uh, operation, is to ITO House Bill 48 let legislative services continue to work on a bill uh, uh, along the lines of what the subcommittee uh, drafted, but also um, addressing all of the other parts of the election laws that deal with the, work, the definition of party. This would be the second bill that we're going to do this if everybody chooses to do this bill. We can put forward a bill after the deadline in January as a full committee. We wanted you to hear that option before we go forward with the ITL because we don't want anybody in this room to think that we're just going to get rid of this bill and we're done dealing with it. We will work on it as a full committee. And so I move ITL on House Bill 48 for the reasons stated. You said you have a second? I'll say. Okay, the, um, HP 48, the motion is ITL. Uh, we yes. Explain. 
Yes. <laughs> okay, moving right along to House Bill 156. What's going on in the State House and really how things operate until you have lunch in the Barley House. It's pretty much standard procedure. I'm right. You Rich can... Tommaso, Media Director for LPNH. What the hell happened in there? Um, um, what happened was that they put um, together the language for for distinguishing a major party and a mi major party and a minor party. Um, when they brought it to legislative services, um, the the feedback was that uh, the language for party, um, because party is referenced in so many other places in the law, that there may be some unintended consequences of changing the definition. Uh, and they decided that it would be irresponsible to just simply put this bill forward without knowing the full ramifications, which is why it was recommended ITL, and they were going to bring forth a committee bill, um, which is another one of those um, procedural things where the committee is going to work on a bill um, and essentially sponsor it as the committee and bring it in in January. So I did talk to Representative Pierce. He's still 100% behind the bill. Um, he says the committee seems in general to be in favor of it. And what's your considered prognosis? Um, I know uh, Representative Pierce is going to do a good job on it. He's been doing a very good job so far. He said he'd keep me in the loop. Um, and everyone else on the subcommittee at least seems to be on board and I've talked to a few other reps who, who are in favor of, of ballot access reform. So I'm not I'm not at all worried about something decent coming out of the committee, and I'm, I'm hoping we'll get an ought to pass. Um, it's just going to, you know, take another month or two longer than we had originally hoped. Another morning in the life of a liberty political activist. If you're interested in participating, check out nhliberty.org, New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. Join in.